Almost three quarters of the world is made up of the ocean. Considering that, it's surprising how little we know about it. And the more we learn, the more we realize that the ocean is just not capable of supporting the degree to which we're using it. We're overfishing and we're polluting the oceans. And we're only now beginning to get a sense of the impact that we're having. The Bahamas Biocomplexity Project is a five-year project through the National Science Foundation to study the design and function of a system of marine protected areas in the Bahamas. Marine protected areas are just one tool of many to protect the ocean. But there's certain things that they do better than other forms of management. One is that they set aside a whole area intact. And if we're really interested in large-scale restoration of marine areas that have been degraded over the decades, over the centuries, we probably need marine protected areas sprinkled throughout the global oceans that basically will produce the seeds for resupplying surrounding areas. One way that we're hoping to make some inferences about what a future network of marine protected areas will do throughout the country is by looking at the performance of the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park, the longest standing park in the Bahamas. And so we want to study conditions within the park and compare them to conditions outside of the park to see what effect that park has had since it's been established almost 20 years ago now. Next dive. Lee Stocking Island Central, dive number 10. We just finished day four of our surveying and we're actually here for another about 18 days of surveying. We're gonna be surveying down here a little bit more and then we're gonna go up into the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park. At the moment, we're using two main methods to survey these areas. One of them is doing fish transects, and the fish transects involve three divers in the water with lines, and then swimming along those lines and counting fish along those transects. The second part of our survey involves using square quadrats, which we put down and videotape. We videotape the whole square, and then we go through square by square within that larger quadrant, filming the various organisms that are attached to the ocean floor. We're surveying a diversity of marine habitats as part of this work, and that's because all these habitats are important in the marine ecosystem as a whole. Of course, we're surveying coral reefs. They support a number of fish species that are harvested by people in the Bahamas as well as throughout the Caribbean. But we're also surveying some other habitats such as seagrass beds and mangroves. We're going to be walking into this mangrove area. It's an old salt pond area, actually, uh, fringed with mangroves. And we're going to be doing some of the same sampling that we did in other locations. Mangroves are a really important part of a lot of tropical coastal ecosystems. A lot of organisms have nursery grounds in mangroves, so you'll see a lot of little things swimming in between the prop roots. A lot of big things also live in mangrove roots. It's an important part of the fishery in many areas. In the Bahamas, fishing is extremely important in the local economies. And so that means it's a challenge to create marine reserves because you have to consider the economics and the needs of people that use these marine resources. 
but it also means that you really have to think hard about the importance of marine protected areas in terms of protecting these resources for Bahamians and their future generations. Okay, well the other area of interest would be the reefs. Do you fish around the reefs? Yes, I do fish around the reef a lot. Okay, and what would be the traditional catch from a reef? Well, snappers is, is, is the main thing that we really go for. To sell to the fish fry restaurants, restaurants like this right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's something that put a few dollars in the pocket. The social research that we're doing on Exuma is very important to the project because when you're telling people that you can't move into an area, you can't fish in an area, basically you're impacting their livelihood. They have to know why. And in order for the marine protected areas to be successful, you have to involve the people because they're the ones who make the MPA become a success. Okay, so you know they're starting to put a marine protected area in within the Keys. Now, how is that going? Is that going to affect your fishing at all? Or are you going to still be able to fish within the marine protected area? Well, like, like they say, once it's protected, you can't go around there. You can't fish in that place. So what, what happened is these, these same Keys that they, they, they block out here, right. they're so productive. If they have to do it for, for a certain amount of years, I have no problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I always could leave it and be happy for it for me too, you know, right. and, and, and the younger generation. But uh, if, if they just close it forever, I, I need to go have a word with them because that's my livelihood in the neighborhood. Specifically so on the island of Exuma, the individuals, the communities are saying that they, they would like to have the, a marine protected area um, in partnership that the people as well as the government should be working together to make the marine parks work. My vision for this project is that we're going to change the way people think about doing applied research in marine environments. Hopefully we'll be very successful in integrating the biophysical and socioeconomic aspects. And then secondly, I really hope that we have an impact on decision-making in the Bahamas. The project is focusing on the Bahamas as sort of a model system, but hopefully a lot of the information that we find from this project can be extrapolated, can be extended to other areas in the Caribbean, and perhaps some of the findings too can be extended all over the world.